We have to pray right now. If you have your cards of the prayer for the hurricane season, composed by my predecessor in office, Bishop Maurice Sheck Snyder, in the year 1967. Let us pray together. O oh God, master of this passing world, hear the humble voices of your children. The Sea of Galilee obeyed your order and returned to its former quietude. You are still the master of land and sea. We live in the shadow of a danger over which we have no control. The gulf, like a provoked and angry giant, can awake from its seeming lethargy, overstep its conventional boundaries, invade our land, and spread chaos and disaster. During this hurricane season, we turn to you, O loving Father. Spare us from past tragedies, whose memories are still so vivid, and whose wounds seem to refuse to heal with the passing of time. O Virgin Star of the Sea, our beloved Mother, we ask you to plead with your Son in our behalf, so that, spared from the calamities common to this area, and animated with a true spirit of gratitude, we will walk in the footsteps of your Divine Son to reach heavenly Jerusalem, where a stormless eternity awaits us. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you all. Good evening. On behalf of the Central Deanery, we welcome you to the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist and tonight's Mass for Protection during hurricane and storm season. We gather this evening as a people of faith, turning to our Lord and placing ourselves in His care, particularly asking for His continued protection and shelter from hurricanes and other storms confident that he is our refuge and our strength. We also pray tonight for all those who have been impacted by storms of the past, both physical storms and also the turbulence in their daily lives. May God fill our hearts with his grace and his mercy, and may he comfort all those who are suffering or have experienced loss due to hurricanes, floods, and other natural disasters, celebrate the sacred mysteries by first calling to mind our sins and failings and asking the Lord for his healing and forgiveness in our lives. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May the martyr St. Boniface be our advocate, O Lord, that we may firmly hold the faith he taught with his lips and sealed in his blood. 
and confidently profess it by our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul said, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. On the contrary, first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout the whole country of Judea and then to the Gentiles. I preached the need to repent and turn to God and to do works giving evidence of repentance. That is why the Jews seized me when I was in the temple and tried to kill me. But I have enjoyed God's help to this very day, and so I stand here testifying to small and great alike, saying nothing different from what the prophets and, Mo and Moses foretold, that the Messiah must suffer, and that as the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own, sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine and mine know me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, everybody. And welcome as we offer this Mass and our prayers today for divine protection from hurricanes and storms. Every year, this Mass is celebrated to ask our Lord to protect us from the storms that are common to our area of the United States. We also place ourselves under the protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary, patroness of our diocese, patroness of the Archdiocese of New Orleans under Our Lady of Prompt Succor. Remembering how the Lord in the Gospels calmed the seas when the apostles were afraid of the boat being swamped. We offer this Mass asking that we be protected during this hurricane season which began on June the 1st of this year. Today the Church also celebrates the Feast of St. Boniface. 
St. Boniface died about the year 750 AD. He was a bishop and a missionary to Germany. In fact, he is the patron saint of Germany and holds the title of the Apostle of the Germans. St. Boniface was born in England and at a very young age entered into a monastery where he was later ordained a priest and then became a missionary to Germany and was named Bishop and soon Archbishop of the entire German country of that day and time. He set about unifying the church in Germany and also stamping out the remnants of paganism that had plagued many areas of that country. Soon he was captured and along with 54 other missionaries was martyred for the faith. And rather than stamping out the Catholic faith in Germany, the blood of the martyrs became the seed of the church and the church began to flourish throughout all of Germany. He truly was the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. Our Lord speaks about being the good shepherd in the gospel today from St. John. Of the many images that our Lord liked to refer himself to was this image of being the good shepherd. In fact, one of the earliest paintings in the 2,000 years of the church's history was found in one of the catacombs in Rome going back to the first century AD. An image on the wall in the catacomb where the Christians celebrated mass secretly. That image was of Jesus the Good Shepherd who carried the lost sheep on his shoulders back to the flock. Jesus compares himself to that in the gospel today, calling himself the Good Shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. Now today in the year 2019, we don't have too much of a reference point for being shepherds. But in our Lord's day and time, it was the livelihood of many people to have a flock of sheep. And very important to have a flock of sheep because it meant sustenance, food, and clothing for a family of a shepherd who had a flock of sheep. And so our Lord compares himself to the good shepherd who really cares about his sheep. The shepherd was vital to the sheep. The shepherd knew where all the grazing pastures were. The shepherd knew where all the watering spots were. The shepherd was there to protect his sheep if a wolf or some other wild beast came to carry them off. And so the worth of a good shepherd was very well understood in our Lord's day and time. And he talks about the hired shepherd who really doesn't own the sheep and the sheep really don't belong to him so he doesn't have a stake in taking care of the sheep. If a wild animal comes around, he's not gonna put down his life to protect sheep that aren't his own. But our Lord says that as the good shepherd, which he is, he is prepared to even lay down his life for the sheep. The image is very important for all of us who belong to the flock of Christ, that we listen always to our true shepherd. He knows where the watering spots are for us. He knows where the true food, where the green pastures are for us. He is there to protect us and to lay down his life as he did on the cross for all of us who belong to his flock. In another part of the Gospels, Jesus talks about the false shepherds who do not lead the sheep to grazing pastures and to watering holes. The false shepherds who don't care about the sheep. We should not listen to them, but we should listen to the Good Shepherd, to Jesus Christ himself. He it is who leads us to true and everlasting life. 
God bless you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have to pray right now if you have your cards of the prayer for the hurricane season composed by my predecessor in office, Bishop Maurice Sheck Snyder, in the year 1967. Let us pray together. O oh God, master of this passing world, hear the humble voices of your children. The Sea of Galilee obeyed your order and returned to its former quietude. You are still the master of land and sea. We live in the shadow of a danger over which we have no control. The gulf, like a provoked and angry giant, can awake from its seeming lethargy, overstep its conventional boundaries, invade our land, and spread chaos and disaster. During this hurricane season, we turn to you, O loving Father. Spare us from past tragedies, whose memories are still so vivid, and whose wounds seem to refuse to heal with the passing of time. O Virgin Star of the Sea, our beloved Mother, we ask you to plead with your Son in our behalf, so that spared from the calamities common to this area, and animated with a true spirit of gratitude, we will walk in the footsteps of your Divine Son to reach heavenly Jerusalem, where a stormless eternity awaits us. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you all. Let us stand as together we present all of our needs and petitions. That the Lord of nature will protect our coastlands and empower us to be good stewards of the environment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord of nature will give new hope to those trying to rebuild their lives and new life to those who died in any natural disaster. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask you to hear these petitions we place before you and grant them through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from all my sins. Thank you, guys. Let us stand and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise which we offer to your majesty in commemoration of the blessed martyr Boniface, that it may lead us to obtain pardon and confirm us in perpetual thanksgiving. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Boniface, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear witness through Christ our Lord. 
And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you, Cyprian. And with your spirit, my Lord. Peace of the Lord be with you, Chester. Peace with you, Jared. Peace with you, William. Thanks for helping. Good. Peace. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. May the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. We have received your heavenly gifts, rejoicing at this feast day, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that we who in this divine banquet proclaim the death of your Son may merit to be partakers with the holy martyrs in his resurrection and his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.